Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to make particles follow a path in 3JS. For this project we'll need an image for our particles. We're going to have to write some shaders. We're going to have to create a path for these particles to follow this curved line here. And we'll have to create the particles using buffer geometry, shader material, uniforms, and then we'll have to animate these particles. So let's get our particle image first. For the particle image you'll need an image with a transparent background. I put a link of my image in the description below. My particle image is in my images folder in my code editor. Okay, first I'm writing my shaders in script tags at the beginning of my HTML file, just below the head section and above the script tag containing the JavaScript. So the first script tag has an ID of vertex shader and you can control the size of the particles here. If you want larger particles, you can use a bigger number. If you want smaller particles, then you can use a smaller number. And then I'm just getting the vertex coordinates in the variable gl underscore position. And in the fragment shader, I'm declaring two uniforms, color and point texture. And I'm getting this v color variable from the vertex shader. And I'm just calculating the color of each pixel here. Okay, so after I've created my scene, camera, and render, now we're going to create our path for the particles to follow. So it's going to be a curve. It's going to be a new 3 Catmull ROM curve 3. And the curve can be created from a series of points, which are vector 3s, containing an X, Y, and Z position. And I'm setting the closed curve to true. That means it will be a loop. If you don't want it to be a loop, you can set this to false, and it will just be a line. And there's different types of curves that you can use. I'm using a centripetal curve. You can use a chordal curve to give you a different look. Or you can use a cat malrum curve, which is a different type of look again. But I'm going to use centripetal. Right now our curve is created from these six points. But I need to create a bunch of points for our buffer geometry. So I'm going to store them in the object vertices. How am I going to get these points? I'm going to use the get space points method. How many points am I going to get from this curve? I'm going to get 80 points from this curve. The higher the number you use, the rounder the curve will be. If you don't want a round curve, you can use a lower number and it will become more polygon shaped. There's bent angles around the corners, but I want mine rounder. And if I console log this vertices array, you'll see that it's an array of vector threes with an X, Y, and Z position. Now I'm going to create a line from these vertices. If we look at the documentation for line, a line can be created from a series of points which are vector threes, which is what our vertices array is. So I'm creating a line geometry. It will be a new three buffer geometry and the geometry will be set from the points in this vertices array. And I'm creating a line material. The visibility is true right now, but at the end we'll, we'll change it to false because we don't need to see the line. We just want to see the particles moving around. And then I'm passing in the line geometry and the line material to create a new line and adding it to the scene. Now we have a path for our particles to follow. So we should create our particles. So the amount of particles will be 10 and the positions will be stored in the positions array. I'm creating a new float32 array and there will be 30 values in this array, 10 times 3, because each particle will have an X, Y, and Z position. And if we console log the positions array, you'll see that we have 30 zeros. So when we create an array in this way and tell it how many values it will have, it will fill it with zeros. The positions of the particles in this array will be updated in the animate loop. Now I'm creating an empty array for the colors of the particles and I'm creating the color white. And I'm creating an empty array for the sizes of the particles. So now I'm going to loop through each of the particles and create a color and a size. So I'm looping through every particle. I'm setting the color hue saturation lightness, HSL, and the hue will change for each particle and the saturation and lightness will be the same for each particle. So the hue will be the number in this loop, whether it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'm dividing it by the amount of particles and multiplying it by 1. And then I'm converting that RGB color to an array using the to array method. And I'm putting it into the array colors and there will be three values put in that array because each color has an RGB value. And the particle size for each of these particles will be 50. Now I'm going to put the sizes array, the colors array, and the positions array into the buffer geometry. 
by setting them as an attribute. So I'm creating a new three buffer geometry. The first attribute will be called position. It will be a new three buffer attribute because I called it a float32 array up here. It is stored in the positions array and the item size is three because it has an X, Y, Z position. The second attribute will be called custom color. It will be a new three float32 buffer attribute because I didn't name it a float32 array up here. It was stored in the colors array and its item size is three because it has a red, green, and blue value. The third attribute will be called size. It's a float32 buffer attribute. It's stored in the sizes array and has an item size of 150. So let's rate our uniforms. So the first uniform will be called color. Its value will be a new three color and it'll be white. And if we look at our geometry, one of the attributes is called custom color. And if we look in the vertex shader, we have an attribute called custom color and the custom color is equal to the V color and the V color helps set the color for the pixels in this fragment shader. And the second uniform will be point texture. Its value will be that image that we're loading with a new three texture loader. So whatever image you downloaded for your particle, that will be the point texture. Now we're creating our particle material. It will be a new three shader material. We're gonna pass in uniforms, the vertex shader, the fragment shader. Its blending will be three additive blending. So it'll add the RGB values together if they overlap. Depth test will be false and its transparent property will be true. Then we're just going to create a new three points. I'm gonna call it particle and I'm passing in the geometry and the material that I just created. And I'm gonna add that particle to the scene. So now we've created our particles. They're just not going to move. So we need to do that in the animate loop. Okay, so I'm calling the animate loop and the animate loop is calling this render function and in the render function, we're going to move the particles. I'm getting the attribute position from the buffer geometry and I'm storing it in pause. And then I'm getting the amount of time that has elapsed with this performance now and multiplying it by 0.0003. This will control the speed of the particles. If you want the particles to move faster, you can make this number bigger. And if you want the particles to move slower, you can use a lower number. So now I'm going to loop through all the particles and change their position. So P will be a point on the curve for the particles. So it says get point from that curve. Remember curve was this curve that we created up here and we made more vertices for that curve here. And then we made the line for that curve here. So there's three things in this equation, the time, this constant, and this variable i, which is the particular particle. If I take the time out, all the particles are in the exact same position. So we can change how the particles behave by changing this constant. If you use a lower number, then the particles become more grouped together. Okay, so we're getting a point on that curve and then we're setting the position of that particle to a point on that curve. So I'm gonna give this particular particle, I, a new X position, a Y position, and Z position on that curve by using the set X, Y, Z method. We need to set the update property to true for the position attribute here. And the computer will update the position of all the particles. 